I call the meeting to the City Council to order for today, Monday, February 11th. Please rise so we can salute our beautiful flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President. Council Sullivan. I ask everybody to continue standing, please. Take a moment of silence. City of Brockton lost a true champion, former principal Brockton High, and I know there's a lot of Brockton High alums. Mr. Bobby Reagan passed away, and our thoughts are uh, over the weekend, and our thoughts are with his wife and the, and the Reagan family. Moment of silence, please. Thank you, Mr. President. May he rest in peace. Counselors and guests, uh, we have a, a packed house. I even saw some flowers back there. I'm not exactly sure if they're for me. <laughs> Probably not. I'm sure they're not. Oh, I feel so. Uh, the president doesn't get flowers. They don't? No. Oh, okay. They get weeds. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, the agenda, please. Number one. We have the acceptance of the minutes of the January 28th, 2019 City Council meeting. That is accepted and placed on file. The appointment of Jeff. Council. Uh, <coughs> Fowell. 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 I was going to say Council Zioli. Yes, uh, Fowell. Well, he's been here long enough. So. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, pursuant to communications from the mayor and the fire chief, I would like to ask that with respect to the appointments, we waive reading of 8 and 9 on the agenda and that those be postponed to a future meeting. Second. A motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor? All those opposed? So be it. Okay. <clears throat> we have the appointment of Jeffrey Channel to 685 Oak Street, Unit 12, Brockton, from an alternate to member of the Brockton License Commission for a three-year term. That will be referred to finance. The motion of firefighter David P. Owen to the rank of fire lieutenant in the Brockton Fire Department. Mr. President. Uh, Council Sullivan. I'd like to make a motion to take uh, numbers 3 through 15, excluding 8 and 9, collectively. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion has been properly made and properly seconded. We take items 3 to... 15. 15 and excluding 8 and 9. All those in favor? I'll do the motion on that first. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? So President, I'd like to make a motion to take it on the suspension rules on that tonight. Yeah. All those in favor of taking it on the suspension rule? All those opposed? We will do that. The motion of firefighter David P. Owen to the rank of fire lieutenant in the Proctor Fire Department. Promotion of firefighter James E. Crocker to the rank of fire lieutenant in the Proctor Fire Department. The promotion of firefighter Robert G. Riser to the rank of fire lieutenant of Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of firefighter Heather Dalton to the rank of fire lieutenant of the Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of firefighter Richard G. Gankney to the rank of fire lieutenant of the Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of fire lieutenant Christopher J. Martin to the rank of fire captain, Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of Fire Lieutenant Timothy J. Lacocha to the rank of Fire Co Captain of the Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of Fire Lieutenant Christopher J. Byers to the rank of Fire Captain of the Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of Fire Captain Edward R. Williams to the rank of Deputy Fire Chief of the Brockton Fire Department. Promotion of Fire Captain Jeffrey J. Machetti to the rank of Deputy Fire Chief in the Brockton Fire Department. And a promotion of Fire Captain Joseph F. Solomon to the rank of Deputy Fire Chief in the Brockton Fire Department. This, the Council Cruz. I just wanted to make note before we uh, vote on these as a, as a group, there are a, a, a list of wonderful people here tonight all getting promoted, but I think we need to take note of the fact that we have our first female officer in the Brockton Fire Department being appointed tonight. <laughs> Heather Dalton, and I think that. Thank you, Mr. President. I didn't want that to get lost with all these other names here, but uh, thank you. Uh, a point well made, uh, Counselor. Um, a motion has been properly made and properly seconded that we take items 3 to 15, except, except for number 8 and 9, collectively and act on it tonight. All those in favor of taking those items collectively and act on it tonight? All those opposed? So be it. Congratulations. Uh, we want to do a roll call. Oh, we have to do a roll call. Yeah, do a roll. I'm new at this, so that's why it's okay. it's going to take some time. On the motion, no. in the history of my colleague, 
Council Bogart. I think she's probably very excited knowing that we have our first female ever. I know she must be so proud <laughs> knowing that not just her, but also Susan Nicastro, Shelly Azak. I could not be more proud to know that you are part of this team. So let's do it. Yeah. yeah. It's all good stuff. Yes. Oh, well, we all want, so let me do it this way. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please read the, the roll. Azak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 11 in the affirmative. Yes, I make motion for reconsideration. Second. Does that prevail? The motion has been properly made for reconciliation in hopes that it does not prevail. All those in favor? <laughs> All those opposed? Reconciliation. I think we ought to take that. All the appointees, could you please just stand so we can see who you are and uh, Where you are. and be recognized? Take a short recess. Hey, Gene, we're not going to hold this for you again, you know? He's taking more pictures. Uh, the meeting of the city council is back on, and I, uh, councilors, I just wanted to, to, to say something real quick. Um, you know, when you uh, have a few languages rolling around in your head, sometimes what you want to say doesn't necessarily come out as it should come out. So reconciliation and reconsideration, you know, sometimes <laughs> flows all together. So I just wanted to make sure we remember that it's re reconsideration <laughs> and not reconciliation. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the clerk's fault, you know. But anyways, <laughs> Mr. Clerk. I'll take the blame for that. Of course. <laughs> we have the reappointment of Eugene S. Merrill, 128 Healy Terrace, Brockton to the Brockton Development Authority for a five-year term. That will be referred to finance. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of February 4th, 2019. Uh, that will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the DPW Commissioner requesting that the City Council transfer the total appropriation in the amount of $215,000, $200,000 from DPW Purchase of Services, and $15,000 from DPW Goods and Supplies to DPW Overtime in order to cover the projected overtime expenses and emergencies for the remainder of the year. That will be accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. And that will be accepted and placed on file. We have communication from the Brockton Police Chief requested that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the additional grant funds in the amount of $18,992.10 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research Fiscal 19, Governor's Safety Com Communities Initiative Local Law Enforcement Equipment and Technology Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 19 Governor's Safer Communities Initiative Local Law Enforcement Equipment and Technology Grant Fund. The grant funds are provided to the Brockton Police to purchase P25 compliant interoperable radios. The BFD will be purchasing nine radio units and five batteries. There is no match required. That will be accepted and placed on the file. The mayor recommending the same. That too will be accepted and, and placed on file. The CFO relative to the same. And also accepted and placed on file. From the assistant city solicitor. Regard, with regards to senior citizens discount agreed to as part of the 2018-2028 Comcast cable renewal license, Comcast has informed the city mm -hmm. that the discount will be implemented no later than March 1, 2019. To obtain the discount, qualified seniors must call Comcast at 800-266-2278 or 888 
633-4266 after March 1st, and Comcast will send a form to complete. As indicated in the letter Comcast forwarded along with the cable renewal license, Comcast will offer a discount equal to $2 per month off digital starter or a discount equal to 10% off limited basic cable. The discount will be for those persons age 65 or older who are head of households and receive an SSI or Medicaid. Qualifying seniors may be asked to show documentation proving their qualifications. Acceptable documentation would be the following. Proof of age, driver's license, birth certificate, or passport. Head of household, lease, deed, town tax bill, receive an SSI or Medicaid benefits under Social Security. That will be accepted and placed on file. Uh, uh, Mr. Clerk, we have a, uh, a late communication that I'll share my microphone with our Legislative Council. So she can read it. Um, thank you. I just have a letter that I'd like to read into the record, um, if that's okay, um, from the Council. Um, I wanted to take an opportunity to provide a brief history relative to the marijuana regulations developed in the City of Brockton. The City Council, the Ordinance Committee, and myself as Legislative Council have been working on these matters for more than a year. Of note, the following accurately recounts some of the history of these matters. At the beginning of 2018, a resolve was filed by Councilor at Large Wynne Farwell to commence discussions regarding marijuana legislation in the City of Brockton. The resolve was discussed at the March 19, 2018 finance meeting. Thereafter, at the next City Council meeting on March 26, 2018, the following matters were brought before the City Council. An ordinance amending Chapter 27 of the revised ordinance of the City of Brockton concerning the humanitarian medical use of marijuana. An ordinance amending Chapter 27 of the revised ordinance of the City of Brockton concerning the regulation and taxation of marijuana. Order, acceptance of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 64N, Section 3, Local Option Tax of Marijuana Products, be it ordered by the City Council of the City of Brockton to accept the provisions of Section 3 of Chapter 64N of the General Laws, empowering the City of Brockton to implement a 3% tax upon sale or transfer of marijuana or marijuana products by a marijuana retailer operating within the City of Brockton. Order medical and adult use marijuana establishments host community agreements be it ordered by the city council of the city of brockton order adult use marijuana establishments licensing and regulations the matter relative to the implementation of three percent tax was recommended favorable by the finance committee and voted favorable by the city council on april 9th 2018 I advise the City Council that a, a moratorium on the retail sales of marijuana in the City of Brockton would be necessary for the vetting and final passage of the licensing and zoning regulations. On April 9, 2018, the City Council passed a moratorium extending the ban on retail sales through December 31, 2018, or upon final passage of the licensing and zoning regulations, whichever occurred sooner. The moratorium was later extended through the end of this month, February 28, 2019. On June 25, 2018, a matter relative to a ballot question for preventing marijuana retail sales was referred to the Finance Committee. That matter subsequently did not receive favorable recommendation. The marijuana licensing regulations were originally filed as an order as opposed to ordinances. I opine that the matter be filed as an ordinance instead. Councilor Sullivan and Councilor Rodriguez submitted a new ordinance to the City Council relative to marijuana license and regulations on June 25, 2018, and that was referred to the Ordinance Subcommittee. The next month, on July 25, 2018, and then on September 6, 2018, November 7, 2018, and November 20, 2018, the Ordinance Committee met to review the matter relative to licensing of marijuana retail establishments. On July 25th, 2018, October 18th, 2018, November 7th, 2018, November 20th, 2018, and December 18th, 2018, the Ordinance Committee met to review the matter relative to the zoning and marijuana retail establishments. In the interim, months of research and drafting took place 
to matters, to ready the matters for final passage. On November 20th, 2018, the Ordinance Committee voted to recommend favorably the licensing regulations. That matter was passed through a third reading at the December 10th, 2018 City Council meeting and passed for final passage on December 27th, 2018. At the December 18th, 2018 Ordinance Committee meeting, the committee and myself were informed that it was agreed that the Planning Board must take a new vote as their vote had expired and there was substantial amendments to the zoning ordinance that the Planning Board had originally reviewed and voted on. We were informed that the Planning Board would review the amended zoning ordinance in their January 2019 meeting. I've learned that due to advertisements uh, requirements, which are required by the state, that the Planning Board was not able to hear the matter until their February 5th, 2019 meeting. After the December 18th, 2018 Ordinance <coughs> Committee meeting on the zoning matter, the matter was properly submitted by Councilor Sullivan at the December 27th, 2018 City Council meeting. At that time, the matter was referred to planning, which is a requirement of Massachusetts law. Um, and on January 28, 2019, a public hearing was held, also a requirement of Massachusetts law. And the matter was postponed until today, February 11, 2019, as I advise that Massachusetts law requires the planning board's vote prior to final passage by the city council. Tonight, I will be recommending that the zoning ordinance be passed to a third reading, with final vote being marked for the agenda for the next meeting on February 28, 2019. Massachusetts laws regulate the standards for passage of zoning matters. This is my recommendation to ensure adequate advertising of the final passage in the newspaper as required by law. The City of Brockton, and with emphasis on the Ordinance Committee, have vigorously vetted the licensing, taxation, and zoning of marijuana matters. As Legislative Council, numerous communities have reached out to me for copies of the drafting by the Ordinance Committee to serve as standards in other communities. Uh, representatives from other communities traveled great distances to attend the Ordinance Committee meetings to follow the lead of the Brockton City Council in vetting, licensing, and zoning of retail marijuana sales. At all times, the Brockton City Council and the five members of the Ordinance Committee followed Massachusetts general law, abided by open meeting law, and acted under the guidance of legal counsel. Thank you. That will be accepted and placed on file. Could you make sure we get copies of that, please? Absolutely. Right uh, Council Sullivan. Mr. First of all, I want to thank, Mr. President, thank you. I want to thank uh, Attorney Resnick and uh, the members of the Ordinance Committee. And I also want to take the time to thank the Planning Board, who did meet. Uh, and the recommendation uh, that they generated actually was a very good recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm hopeful that we will be able to accept that recommendation and incorporate that before the final vote. Uh, but again, I do want to thank the Chairman of the Planning Board for getting the recommendation, recommendation to us. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Council Self. Uh, Council Cruz, are you, are you all set with well, that? Right. Mr. Clerk. We have the report of the Planning Board for its meeting of February 5th. 2019. That will be accepted and placed on file. An audit amending Chapter 27 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton concerning the regulations of taxation of marijuana be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton, Article 3, General Regulations and Permitted Modifications, is hereby amended by adding the following section 27-24.4, Adult Use of Marijuana. Favorable as amended in ordinance committee and city council January 28, 2019. Hearing held postponed to February 11, 2019 meeting. Favorable with recommendations to the planning board. In council March 26, 2018. Reading referred to standing committee on ordinance and planning. Those reports were favorable as amended. In city council December 27, 2018. Referred to planning. The city council and the city council January 28, 2019 postponed. The report of the planning board is favorable with the following recommendations. Six, operational requirements, restric restrictions, and conditions. B, odor control and ventilation three. The exhaust system is to control odor shall be designed by a licensed professional air quality environmental engineer recognized by the Commonwealth. The question is on passage to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. All those in favor of a passage to a third reading? All those opposed? The, the question carries. Ordered that the sum of $7,800,000 is appropriated to pay costs 
of making improvements to the city's water waste and wastewater treatment facilities, including the payment of all planning and engineering costs and all other costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 44 and or Mass General Laws Chapter 29C, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the city, therefore, that such bonds and notes shall be general obligations of the city, unless the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, determines that they should be issued as limited obligations and may be secured by local system revenues as defined in Mass General Laws, Chapter 29C, Section 1. That the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, the trust, established pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 29C, and in connection therewith to enter into a finance agreement and or a security agreement with the trust and otherwise to contract with the trust and the Department of Environmental Protection with respect to such loan and for any federal or state aid available for the project or for the financing thereof, and that the mayor is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with DEP to expend all funds available for the project and to take any and other all other necessary to carry out the project. Further ordered, any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this order, lest any such premiums apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds and notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this order in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount. Further ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Mass General Laws Chapter 44A of the General Laws and any and all bonds or notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. Each order must be published at least 10 days prior to final passage and requires at least a two-thirds vote of all members of the Council. For each order, a certificate from you as the Chief Financial Officer is required by Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990 and should be filed prior to adoption of the loan order. If you do not give the required certification, or if you are unable to make the certification without expressing qualifications or contingencies, the loan order may only be passed by the City Council if the absence of such certification, a qualified or contingent nature of such certification is expressly noted in such order. If any funds are to be advanced for these purposes and reimbursed from bond proceeds, please note the requirements of Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, SS 20A, and the guidelines issued by the Director of the Bureau of Accounts, favorable, and City Council, January 28, 2019. Reading refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. Um, the city's wastewater treatment facility is located in Ward 4, which is my jurisdiction. Um, as the result of the discussion at last week's finance committee meeting and an article in Saturday's newspaper, I've gotten a lot of calls about this from fixed income constituents who are very concerned about having a rate increase imposed on them. So I went back and reviewed everything, and I noted that um, on the agenda for our January 28th meeting, the uh, letter from the CFO stated a rate increase of 5% would be necessary to ensure continuous provisions of service. I also went back and looked at everything, and so I'm not ready to vote on this. I need more information. Specifically, I want to send this back to Finance Committee to ask someone from CDM Smith, who are our paid consultants, to come back and talk to us about this and the requirements that are being imposed by the EPA and the DEP. 
I also want to request the math from the CFO that resulted in his comments. I know that he said to us last week, he made a lot of comments about this, it's well reported in the newspaper, about a 5% increase and there not having been one since 2009 or 2010, but I need to see the numbers. I, I need to satisfy myself about all of this and I also need to reassure my constituents that in passing this, we're not saying we're raising the sewer rates at this time, we're saying that there will be one in the future. So as a result, I'd like to make a motion to send this back to the Finance Committee. Second. Second. Okay. So on the motion? On the motion. Uh, thank you and uh, great respect for my colleague and I understand that the sewer plant is there, but I would disagree with one statement. She said it was very poorly uh, reported in the Enterprise. The Enterprise article states that there will be a, a, a this year that there will be a uh, sewer rate increase. Mr. Condon made it very clear that after the bonds are uh, finalized, that we, in his opinion, we will need to look at a sewer rate increase. That does not mean there is going to be a sewer rate increase. It does not mean it will be 5%, and it does not mean this year. This work needs to be done, and I, I don't, with all due respect to my colleague, I'll be voting no on sending it back. It's, we need to get this working, we need to get this done. This is under federal order and we need to get this done, so I'm going to be voting no on sending it back. Council Powell. Yes, just, just very briefly and with great respect for my colleague from Ward 1, the paperwork submitted to us by Commissioner Rowley indicated this project does not have to be done until 2022. It is perfectly proper, and I would say it's a requirement on our part to know what will the financial ramifications be for our residents if we go ahead and borrow this money. We wouldn't buy a car not knowing how we're really going to pay for it. Well, we shouldn't borrow $7.8 million, however, however proper the purpose is, without knowing what will the tangible results be or what should they be in order to satisfactory, satisfactorily fund this bond. So I don't, given the fact that we have until 2022, and again with respect to my colleague, I don't think a delay of two or three weeks to have someone come in present what might be the proposed rate structure, have us take a look at it, and then be well informed to answer any questions from constituents and let people know exactly where they might fall if there is, in fact, an ordinance introduced to, to raise rates. So uh, I, I, I do not see this request as being out of the ordinary. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Borgard, did you want to say? And with respect to uh, my colleague in Ward 1, my big concern, not that it isn't about the, the residents and, and paying you know, higher rates, but my concern is I believe that having the engineer come in and maybe explain something, not that any of us here are engineers, but it just allows to have a little bit more explanation of what this truly entails. And, and why it's necessary. And I just believe that the more people know, the better off they are. And it just seems to me that two or three weeks would not be, and an, an no, no reflection on our um, DPW um, superintendent. He, he does a marvelous job and everything, but it just seems that it would be important to explain the, you know, all the dynamics involved and because I'm sure there'll be some interruptions and some, how would I say, inconveniences for, for many as this, as this uh, project embarks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Derencourt, and then followed by Councillor Hainier. Mr. Chairman, um, with regard to what my colleague Susan DeCastro just mentioned about more information with regard to this issue, I think that I'll be more than happy to join you, given the fact that although uh, you represent what for, but I represent the entire city, I personally would like to get more information in regard to, you know, you know why do we have to borrow this money and what are the importance given what my colleague just said if this is something that can wait until 2022 then we have no need to watch this so if we can give it like two weeks even a month to get all the information that are necessary before we make that final decision which is which will be an impact on our city regardless of the consequences i think that it is wise for us to wait in having the person with the knowledge to explain to us not just the money but also how we're going to spend it and why it's important in terms of like showing us a map and stuff like that and I don't think I'm ready to actually vote in any kind of increased tax in the city. I would be more than happy to vote against it, I can tell you that. But I am more than happy, you know, to say yes to you and we get to sending this back and wait for more information. So I just want to say this publicly. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Yanieri. Just, uh, just a couple of points, and, and uh, one of which is, um, you know, I don't have much, con you know, concern to the fact that the engineers would be coming, coming back. But I think the one... Um, 
one biggest point that uh, we need to, to make and keep in mind that if we're going to keep this before finance for the next, uh, could be the next finance meeting, the finance meeting after that, that I hope that the new CFO is on, uh, I think that he better be studying it right now, to be truthful with you, because the other CFO was gone at the end of this week. So, um, again, I understand where some of my counselors are coming from, but uh, again, as I call it, and you can take it any way you want to take it, we're just nitpicking at something that needs to be taken care of. I agree with my counsel from Ward 1. This is something that we've been talking about and has been even talked to us, I don't know how many different different times about it. Something that needs and has to be done. And uh, I understand where it's located. It's located in Ward 4, but now it becomes a city issue. And we've got to keep in mind, you're, you're talking about 98,000 residents that this also details. So. That's my greatest concern, and, and if it does come to a fact that we have to have a rate increase, we have to. We've stayed away from it for five, nine years, I think it is, since we've had one, and at some point, you're going to have to have one. But I agree with my counsel from Ward 1. didn't say it was going to happen today, tonight, or tomorrow. It's going to be put before us, and, and you're going to have to make that decision. And then we'll get to that level, and guess what? It'll be something else we nitpick at. So. I'm sorry, but in, in my eyes, it's something that needs to be done. And uh, if it goes back, it goes back. But I just hope that the next CFO is very up the breast on, on, on what it's all about because I'm not going to rely on just what the engineers have to say either. So that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Lally. Thank you. Um, just in, in regards to the, the questions on you know, the money that we're discussing right now, we had Commissioner Rowley, we had Jay Condon, we had everyone here, and we did ask them questions just last week. I think that, you know, with, with the, you know, you can never, never ask enough, but with what we're looking for here, I, I don't think it's, it's beneficial to postpone. Uh, concerns and questions about increasing, you know, any rate, are a completely different matter. You know, we can do, we have to do that separately. This, this does not tie into directly what we're doing here. We will, of course, have to, or we will have, we'll have to discuss, you know, an increase regardless, but um, if we, you know, go forward with this bond, which we have to do, uh, of course, everyone has to discuss, you know, an increase a little more, a little more seriousness because it's that much money, ma much more money we're spending. But, uh, that discussion is not, you know, we, we don't have one vote on that. That's a whole, that's a whole separate matter. Uh, in terms of what we're looking at right now, this is, this is something that needs to be done. It's something that needed to be done. Uh, I, I'm not comfortable kicking it down the road, even just another couple of weeks. I'd, I'd like to deal with it now. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I think, with all due respect, I think that, you know, if, if we are going to, wait on this for a little bit. The only really thing other than what Dennis just said with Jay Conan retiring, and that, that's a, a big, big if with if, if Mr. Clarkson's gonna be up to speed, but we also have to be cautious under the municipal bond market for the interest rates. If we wait too long, it could be a detrimental impact to the city of Brockton. Um, I don't have any problem, you know, if, if we can um, get all the answers um, to your questions. You know, the consultant may or may not show up. That's the only, only caveat, much like Moses and I learned with Aquaria. So, you know, I, I, I think that there's no harm in delaying it to the next FinCom, but I would be cautious because we could be at a financial burden if we, we wait too long. This is not just something that has to be done. It's, it's a requirement because it's really at the detriment of the taxpayers right now. So I, I will support you, Councillor, but I think we need to be crystal clear on who's coming here so that all the answers are, are, are done that night. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Uh, Council. Yeah, just, I understand everybody's concerns and stuff, but basically, I don't know how many more questions we can ask. We had him here last week. Jay Connor was here la last week. And like I was saying, he's going to be gone. Like, and Councilor Sullivan said, we don't know if the new man coming in, he's going to be up to speed. So I don't know how much more answers we need as far as a sewer rate. Like Councilor Lally said, that's down the road, maybe. But I think, you know, I think we've, pretty much run the gamut on questions for this. I don't know what else we really need to do. So, uh, you know, I just I, I don't think it makes any, not, just no disrespect. I don't really think we need to bring it back again, but I'll go with what we uh, vote on tonight. But thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, uh. 
Um, I've worked on these matters with other communities before, so I did have a discussion with Susan. Um, basically what's happening is that they have to have a permit reissued every year, and that's why that they come up with them every year, and it's, it's a financial burden to other communities. Towns like Bridgewater have had to deal with this. The information that Susan is looking for is something that the engineer should have already had required to have submitted as part of the permitting process. If it was to show if your average tax rate or bill is $100 you know, every quarter, if this is even with this bond, it's expected to go up to this starting in this year. That information should be easily attainable. Um, and it's, I don't think that this is something that they would need to compile the data. I think it's already there. Go ahead, Councilor. Um, how do I put this? I mean, I do believe in doing what I think is best for the city, but at the same time, I think that. Looking at this, we're talking about $7 million that we're gonna bow. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I think that um, bringing this money on board and get this project going is one of the best things that we can do. But I think if we are willing to bow that much money, why can't we wait for like one or two weeks to get the information that we need while we are watching this? I mean, I think that's one of the, that's one of my biggest problems when it's come down to stuff in this place in terms of like, you know, whether or not we are willing to wait. I mean, I, this is not a matter of how long we can wait for it, but it's making sure that we come up with the best decision. Because as of right now, I think the engineer or the consultant should be able to come here and give us the information that we need. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd be more than happy to vote onto this, but like Council Nikashudra said, this project is in your ward and you got a lot of calls and a lot of issues so far about this. So I think that by postponing this, we are giving whomever the opportunity to come and give us an explanation in terms of like why they believe this is important. I understand that Jay's about to leave, but I think like I said, if we, are, you know, if we are in need of bringing him back to give us more detail about this, I'm assuming that he would be more than happy to come back. Don't get me wrong, he may say no, whatever, but we are about to hire someone to fill his position. I would assume that person should be able to actually know this. That's a question about it, that's a big job. He may not know, but how do I put this? As somebody who's about to be on board, I think he should ask Jay what are some of the important matters that I should know now in order for me to make certain decisions. I am not willing to vote on $7 million tonight without knowing what am I voting for. So I think it's important to know all of the details before we can actually move on. So I will join you, that's a definite. I'll be more than happy to vote to postpone this. And if it's gonna be you and I, I'll be more than happy to do so. Uh, you thank welcome. you, Council, uh, Councilor Isaac. You're the only one who hasn't said anything. Do you wanna I chime say, in? I can talk for hours if you'd like, but. No, no, um, no. no please. Uh, call, to my <laughs> colleagues, I mean, I, I've been hearing about this since pretty much since I got onto the city council. We have a lot of information. I think what Shannon mentioned that uh, Attorney Resnick mentioned that if we could um, get some of the information from the um, engineer, I would be happy to see that. But I want to see that either way, even if this passes, and I am going to support this because I don't f I don't want I don't want this to go on any further. I think. What we haven't realized is city councils, we're not at the negotiating table. Even after the engineers come before us, we're not negotiating anything. They're, we're just, we're going to end up accepting it. So I think delaying anything any further is only going to, um, to just be just more time that goes by. But, so I will support this, but I still want to see the information from the engineers, and I think we can request that from them. And as far as Mr. Condon goes, I know he's retiring, but I'm pretty sure he will, uh, he'll be at a, you know, right there to help the um, new uh, CFO if, he's, if he needs any questions answered. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I believe everybody has uh, spoken. Councillor Fowell, you want to cap that off? M my last comment would be, I, I don't think we're nitpicking. I guess the question for me is, if you're going to ask a city council, any city council, in any city in Massachusetts, for authorization to borrow $7.8 million, wouldn't you give them all that information from the get-go? Wouldn't you give them the information when you submit the loan order? Here is what we think is going to be required. We do foresee a rate increase. If we have a rate increase, this is how it's going to translate into the block rates that you have. And then the residents can take a look at that information and have some idea of how they're going to be affected. That's all we're trying to do is find out for our residents what may, again, may happen if the block rate structure is changed and or an ordinance increase uh, increases the fees. And, and I don't think that's out of the ordinary. Thank you. <coughs> just, just a point on that, if I might. Go right ahead, sir. Because when, when you
you start talking about the, the rate increases, and you haven't been here to see a rate increase that I know of at this point, Councilor Fowler. Yeah. No, because we haven't done one in nine years. So you're going to see all of that before you're even going to even digest whether or not you want to give a rate increase based upon what you got before you, based upon what could be the future. Uh, I'm not going to be here for 10, 20 years from now. You're not either. You know what I mean? They may not go up, you know, 10, 10 more years from now. But you're going to see all of that at that particular time. But I agree with my, my counsel from, from, again, from Ward 1 and even Ward 7. I mean, we've known this for a long time. And, and even what Councilor Sullivan has said, it makes darn good sense the fact that I will that I have a problem with the fact of what it's going to be if the bond in, in interest changes. I mean that's the the kicker. I mean it, this isn't all going to happen tomorrow, but it's in place. You're still going to have questions. You know it's it's the same it, it's the same thing all the time over and over. And, and I keep hearing it. And yeah, I represent people in, in Ward Three as well. I haven't received one phone call, irregardless about a rate increase or or, or, or irregardless or or what they're doing at the sewer treatment plant. But I just get tired of hearing sometimes that we've, we've got to tell the people. The people know it. The people know it. Sometimes you're going to make the decision in the best interest of the city, and this council doesn't do that, and it's sad. We keep playing and playing, and when, when, when we do get the information, no, we don't have enough. No, we've got to look at this. No, pull this out. No, look at Forget it. I could go on and on. Thank you. I was just going to let uh, you've called the vote. Second. Second. Uh, a motion has been properly made and properly second that we refer this back to the uh, finance committee. All those in roll call, roll call. Okay, well, roll call. Madam, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Um, so this is on a vote to send it back, back to, to finance. Um, finance. finance. Um, ASAC? No. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? No. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? No. Monahan? No. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Uh, yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's six in the affirmative, five in the negative. To the Finance Committee, it shall go. Um, Councilor Sullivan. If I could, through you to, uh, to the Ward Councilor, if, if you could, um, because time is of the essence, if you could just compile the list of invitees you want. Because if perhaps Mr. Conning could catch up with Mr. Claxon this week to vet it out, if we're talking two weeks from now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Absolutely. Uh, I, I didn't chime in on that particular item, um, <clears throat> but I, I too, I, I too uh, feel the same way that, you know what, there's absolutely nothing wrong. It's one of the things that we said we were going to do. We need to flood this body with information. Let's flood the body with information, and two weeks isn't going to make a difference, and we can vote uh, positively beyond this. Mr. Clerk, next item, please. The appropriation of the total grant in the amount of $7,109.69 from the Board of Health Massachusetts Association of Health Boards Grant to the City of Brockton Board of Health Massachusetts Association of Health Board Grants Fund and Council January 28, 2019. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Uh, yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative? Next slide. Oh, the order is adopted. <laughs> And, a, I know. And, an appropriation of $80,000 from the Stabilization Fund to Fire Department Personal Services Non-Overtime and Council January 28, 2019. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. And the question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAP? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. <coughs> Cruz? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? President. The Thank order is reconsideration. Second. Second. Hopes it does not prevail. The motion for reconsideration and hopes that it does not uh, prevail has been made and properly second. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Reconsideration fails. 
ordered that the mayor and or real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land containing approximately 0 0.11 acres located and known as plot 66 243 Green Street, more particularly described as parcel identification number 051081. That will be referred to the Committee on Real Estate. Order that the Mayor and or the Treasurer Collector be authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to convey the property located and known as Plot Number 31115 Newbury Street, Parcel ID 053-061 to Melissa Gillings, 10 Ellsworth Street, Brockton, for the purchase price of $1,300, said property to be sold under the Abutta Lot Program and to be sold with a permanent non buildable restriction. Said property shall also merge with a body lot of the purchaser. That too will be referred to the Committee on, on Real Estate. Total appropriation in the amount of $215,000. $200,000 from the DPW Purchase of Services. $15,000 from DPW Goods and Supplies to DPW Overtime. That will be referred to the Committee on Finance. An appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of $18,992.10 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research, Fiscal 19, Governor's Safer Communities Initiative Local Law Enforcement Equipment and Technology Grant. Two, City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 19, Governor's Safety Communities Initiative Local Law Enforcement Equipment and Technology Grant Fund. Councilor Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we act on this tonight under suspension That's of the right. rules. Uh, just to let you know, this is, uh, there was some confusion by the new grant writer at the police department about how to file this, so it came in a little late, but uh, there is a time frame on getting this uh, grant expended, and Captain Pocaro is here tonight to answer any questions that any councilors may have. It is just uh, an unmatched grant to uh, purchase some new police radios that uh, operate differently. Second. The motion has been made to suspend the rule and act on this tonight. All those in favor of suspending the rule and acting on it tonight? All those opposed? Uh, does any counselors, do you have any questions in terms of asking the captain? No question. Well, then we'll go right into the question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The order is adopted. Mr. President, move for reconsideration. Second. hopes it does not prevail. A motion for reconsideration has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Reconsideration fails. Resolved to invite Rob May, Director of Planning. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, I'd like to move to take 34, 35, 36, 37 collectively since they'll, uh, and 38 since they'll all be going to FinCon. Um, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Uh, we'll take them collectively. Thank you. Mr. Clark. Okay, hold on a second here. 34, 35. 34, 35. 36, 37, and 30. Just one, one point, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council I knew. If I might, just on the uh, I, I see item number 36, which, which refers to um, yeah, that's the particular was... Lopes case. I don't know who filed this resolve, but uh, it, it, it would probably have to sit in finance for a long time because it's a little while, anyway. A little oh, while, understand. yeah. You know, yeah. so whoever's filed that one, uh, I guess Me? the Queen of Resolves has got, yes. to, got that one done. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Mr. Right. President. Uh, let, 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 let's That's come on, Councilor Ian Airy. I'm just being Councilor Ian Airy. I, I, I understand, <laughs> but it's a, it is a legitimate issue, and it could be held in executive issue, session. But it, it, no, no, I don't right, think folks, so. Very nice. Oh. All right. All right. Very nice. No, um, I, I play very nice. A motion has been made and properly seconded that we take them collectively. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? What items? Once again. 34. 35, 36, 37, and 38. Resolved, I'll go once again. Yep. Resolved to invite Rob May, Director of Planning, to inform the City Council as to what is transpiring with the Ganley Building since we were told over a year ago that we would be seeing a demolition and new structure in place. 
businesses located in the safe city block have expressed serious concerns. That would be referred to finance. Resolved to invite Rob May, Director of Planning, to inform the City Council as to what is transpiring with this historic commission since the Ordinance Committee of 2018 had voted to create such an entity to protect our historic locations throughout the city. I wish to bring this before the Council since the primary advocate for the, our city's history, Carl Landerholm, is no longer with us and I believe we should continue his work. I'll be referred to finance. Resolved to invite Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, to inform the City Council as to what is transpiring with the Lopes case and other discrimination cases brought forth against the City. That will be referred to finance as well. Resolved to invite Dan Evans, current chair of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation, to inform the City Council as to what is transpiring with this organization since the departure of the Executive Director late in 2018. That will be referred to finance. Resolved to invite the new Chief Financial Officer to come before a committee of this Council to enlighten us on any changes that be made in the operation of the CFO's office. That too will be referred to finance. All items on the agenda are available in their entirety for review in the City Clerk's Office for all interested parties. First one, I ask that a late file be in uh, admitted and read. Uh, motion for a late file. All those in favor of accepting a late file, all those opposed? Mr. Clerk. Whereas the City Council is a local licensed authority for individuals or corporations applying to engage in marijuana-related sales and activities in the city, and whereas pursuant to regulations and laws adopted by the legislature and the Mass Cannabis Control Commission, a host community agreement, agreement is required between a prospective licensee and the community in which the license intends to operate it, and Whereas, it is important that the City conduct a fair and impartial review and approval of any such agreement based on criteria which ensures the best interests of the City and residents. Therefore, be it ordered, the City Solicitor or his designee shall appear before a committee of the City Council to provide all relevant information on the City's criteria and process for review and approval of host community agreements. Two. Copies of all host community agreements approved by the mayor prior to the date of this order be provided to the city clerk for distribution to the city council. Three, for the host community agreements approved by the mayor and or other proper persons or entity after the date of this order, a copy of this agreement or agreements shall be forwarded to the city clerk within seven days of approval. All agreements shall be made available for inspection in the office of the city clerk by any person, with proper notice at least 24 hours in advance of such inspection. That uh, late file will be referred to finance. Uh, Council Sullivan. Put through you. I, I don't sure which colleague signed number 35. The resolve. Council was it Council Borgard? The only thing I would ask is that uh, Council, if you consider also, in addition to Mr. May. Um, a member of the Historic Commission. As you may recall, oh, sure. during oh, yes. the budget season, uh, there was no budget allotted, uh, and subsequently we called the mayor on that, and he did put money, and I believe we have ratified some appointments to the commission. So other than just Mr. May, I, 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 if there is someone, I'd like them here as well. There is. We'll, uh, we'll Thank make you. sure Thank that the, uh, the guests are invited as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Borger. Well, I did. I want in a moment a personal privilege. You may. Okay. Well, first of all, this one is um, not really personal. Um, I just uh, spoke to the chief earlier, who's also the chair of the zoning board. They have postponed the zoning board meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow night in this location. And I imagine we'll be seeing that. The, the people that um, have come for, you know, having their taxes done, Next Monday night is a holiday, so they will not be doing the taxes at the library. And third, uh, well, fourth, the third one here is the Comcast. I will encourage those seniors, and if you're questioning whether you're qualified or not, don't hesitate to call those two 800 numbers. I know a senior that called, and instead of getting $1 off per month, they got $10 off per month. So that was quite the little deal. And the last but uh, not least here, I, I did file this resolve. Uh, Dan Evans is the new chair of B21, and B21 is in a lot of flux. And what's very exciting is not only does this man own a business 
that employs people and is growing in this community, but he is anxious to be as transparent as possible and work closely with the community as possible. So I'm rather excited about having him come along and, uh, you know, how would I say, speak briefly on what's been going on because I believe the citizens of the city are anxious to find out what's happening. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Isaac, Lally, and then Councillor Sullivan. A moment of personal privilege, you Mr. President. Um, thank you. I'd like to publicly thank our DPW Commissioner, Larry Rowley, for, uh, and his team for their hard work yesterday. We had a major water main break on North Main Street and um, uh, many residents lost, um, lost water yesterday. So they worked tirelessly throughout the day. I believe it took them over 12 hours to uh, locate the break and repair it and get um, restore water to many residents. So I would like to thank them. The day started out very cold. It was so icy that you know they had to put salt on the on the road. But thank God the sun came out for them, and it wasn't. They were able to um, make all the repairs. I would also like to thank Mayor Carpenter. He did keep us updated as ward councilors. He kept us updated pretty much, Councilor Lally and myself, because the break was between Ward 7 and Ward 6. He kept us updated so we could keep our residents updated with what was going on. So that was greatly appreciated. So thank you to all who were involved to get water restored back to all our residents yesterday. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilor Lally. Well, my personal privilege. You may, sir. I also, I also want to thank um, the mayor and Commissioner Rowley uh, for keeping us informed and for, uh, you know, resolving that as, as quick as they did. It was a very tough job uh, that they did have to do. Um, but I also want to. I'd be remiss if I did not uh, wish my mother a uh, another a happy a happy uh, 35th birthday again. Um, you know, 35. That's it. That's it. But yeah, no. But I, I did want to wish her a, uh, a happy birthday. Her, uh, her birthday was this week. I did not want to miss that. So thank you. Well, you know, she's going to have to move up soon because you're coming up as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to, first of all, um, thank the Councillors at Lodge. We had our first quarterly Councillor at Lodge meeting last Thursday. I know Jean was under the weather. Um, we didn't have the greatest turnout. We only had five residents. But we will be having another one in May. Um, Captain Picaro and Officer Healy. Great, great updates, and uh, I just wanted to thank the Council at Lodge, and, and we'll do one in May, and we'll figure out where it's going to be. Um, those that sit on the Ordinance Committee, uh, I'm calling a meeting as chairman. It will be this month. It will be the 27th of this month, which is a Wednesday, 6 p.m. here in the auditorium. Mike Thomas of uh, the schools, assistant superintendent, I want to thank him. He's allowing us to use that that night. So, again, it's the 27th, and we do have quite a few agenda items because, again, we put a lot of things on hold to deal with marijuana. So we got to do some catch up from last year and then we have some that's already been submitted this year. And then I too have some birthdays, Jack. So I wanted to uh, wish my son Tommy happy 12th birthday on Saturday and my wife Maria, how old's your mother, 35? My, my wife's 29. So a uh, happy birthday to my wife whose birthday was yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Councillor Ionary, Farwell, and then Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a moment of personal privilege. You may, sir. remind those that sit on the Public Safety Committee, Councilors Fowler, Council Azak, Council Morning, and Council Darrancourt, we have a meeting Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. this Wednesday, 2.13, 5.30 p.m. downstairs at City Hall. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Uh, Council Fowler. I just have a point of information, which I have been authorized by our technician, Carlene, to announce. Please do. She will be welcoming a baby boy into the world in July. So we're all going to, through the next few months, she will have surrogate grandparents or parents to help her through the. That's, congratulations. That's, a, that's good. That's good training with us taking care of this. Absolutely. <laughs> Council of uh, Cruz. Thank you. Uh, actually, a moment of personal privilege. You may, sir. Mine is a little more on a more serious note, um, and I don't usually speak about council issues under a moment of personal privilege, but I think it's very important that we all step back from it and realize, and I think the, the issue we discussed tonight, which is fine that we're going to wait two weeks and talk about the, uh, the uh, sewer treatment bond, but I think we all have to make sure we understand we are going through a sea change in this city right now that's probably bigger than we, when we change the mayor's office. Losing Mr. Condon is changing everything. 
And I think we all have a tendency, I'm very friendly with Jay, and nobody ha has a higher opinion of, of Jay than I do. The idea that we can say, oh, he, he'll come back and talk to us, he can't. Under that state law that makes that, that job, the advice, and the advice and opinions that we have to pay attention now are Mr. Clarkson's and not Mr. Condon's, even if we like them, even if we don't like them, even if we think he has a better grasp on the issue. We can't ask him to come back. He has no legal standing, and in fact, if he had a different opinion, he'd be incorrect in giving it to us, and I know he wouldn't. He's, I know he's available, and he's said he's around for whatever help we need, but I think we all have to, and I know I've talked to other counselors, uh, say, well, let's call Jay and ask him. That's over. Next week when we're here, it'll be Mr. Claxton, and it's his opinion that makes the difference. That those laws that we have to go by, the opinions on whether we need a rate increase, Mr. Conan's opinion no longer matters. It's now Mr. Claxton's ma uh, matter. And we can't be thinking we're going to lean back on Mr. Condon because legally we can't. So I think we all need to step back and just remember that as much as we want to lean on him, we can't. And Mr. Claxton is now the person we have to deal with. And I don't know Mr. Claxton. I th I'm sure he'll do a wonderful job. But I think we all have to remember that this is a change that, again, I, in my opinion, is bigger than when we've changed mayors th through the years. So it's just I, 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 forewarned is forearmed that we don't have the ability now to go back to Mr. Condon. And in fact, not the ability. I don't think, I think our own legal counsel would tell us we don't have the the right he doesn't have standing here anymore so let's just all keep that in mind so thank you that's my lecture for the night uh, thank you sir uh council uh Danica, do you want to say something yeah, thank you mr president um i'm so happy to see my good friend colleen pro lima here in the audience and i know she you know she's an amazing resident she's been in brockton for so long uh, i just want to say publicly it's so good to see you and all of you guys and thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to come and assist this meeting and i see you are with your um, wonderful friend too. It's unfortunate. I do not know your name, but I would like to say, you know, thank you for taking the time to come down here to assist this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Mr. you, Mr. President. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's Chairman, President. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but I just wanted to. I just wanted before we go tonight. I just wanted to say something uh, with regards to what Councillor Cruz just said. Uh, I know that uh, at times it feels like we're you know behind this huge mountain in, that we must climb out of, but. At the same time, we were all put here by the, uh, the taxpayers of this community uh, to ask questions. And if we have some doubts and some questions, it doesn't really matter who we ask. Uh, Jay wasn't going to be around forever, so his time was going to come. It, might, it, it came during my, uh, my lifetime, but it could have been under somebody else's lifetime. So we have to learn to live uh, within our means, in a sense, knowing that you know, we're not, we're not, we're not all going to be here forever and ever, amen, so we have to deal with what we have when we have it. And it's unfortunate that questions do come up, and uh, as, um, as public officials and folks that were put in here to make certain decisions sometimes that might be a little tough to deal with, we must do it, you know. And I don't regret the fact that we voted to send this for another week or two. I think it's worth the fact that we need to talk about this uh, and get the points cleared and... Again, I will, I'll be voting for it, but a week or two isn't going to make that much of a difference, in my opinion. So I think we're going to go forward. And we're going to be OK. Uh, prior, to Mr. prior to Mr. Condon coming in, the sky, was, the sky was still up there, and the earth was down here. And we were doing OK. And we'll be OK as well. So I'm not really all that worried about it. And I, I have trust in, in the individuals that we're bringing in. And if those, are, those individuals aren't cutting it, you know what? There's a thing called the fire button. You know, we get rid of them and bring in somebody else that will actually do the job. Uh, having no further business of the people of this city, I will adjourn this meeting. <laughs>